Today, I'm answering questions that I received via email. A while back, I asked my students if they have questions about interviews. I've received dozens of answers and I have sent my replies to my students so everyone gets to know what the answers are to most of the interview questions. I'm trying to make a video for my students who would prefer to hear me speak instead of just read my message. Marilyn asks, Number one, do you believe that we will have anything we want, including a job, even if it is for us and fit for us? I have a feeling that this question is not the exact question. I think maybe she's wondering, even if the job is not for us or if it's not a fit. When it comes to job fit, it's very difficult to give a final opinion because there are people like myself my personality is I am an introvert, but I was able to train myself to become an extrovert because I've worked in sales that requires good communication skills. It requires a fair deal of extroversion. And I trained myself to become like that. So if you're one of my students and we've spoken on the phone or you've seen my videos, chances are I get to talk for a long time. But I'm not originally like that. I trained myself to eventually become like that because I know that the job requires that I speak in front of people or speak to people. So my answer here, so I'm also sharing the screen of my answers. So just so if you want to read it, you can train yourself to become fit for the job because all jobs require is that you learn a skill. Okay, all you have to do is to learn the skill required at the job. So, for example, you want to work in call, in a call center. You want to work in customer service. You have to learn certain customer service techniques. You also need to be good in English, and on top of that, you learn customer service techniques. Now, if you are going to go after a sales related call center job, you need to know how to sell. If you're going for a tech support job you need to know a little bit more about computers. All jobs require is that you learn a skill. Now, the biggest obstacle is your temperament and possibly your attitude. So if you have a problem, like if you really don't like talking to people, if talking to people drains you, you'd like to avoid talking to people as much as possible, then don't work in a call center. You can get a job as a writer. You can start by writing a blog. If you have questions about that, you can send me a message. I can guide you on how to make that happen. But it's a long process. I usually recommend working in a call center because call centers provide a basic source of income. And then you can use time to invest in yourself and create other sources of income like starting a blog or starting a website and getting clients. And, you know, it takes years to get clients. So it's not something that you can do really quickly. The most important thing that you have, especially if you're an introvert, you need a job. You need a source of income because people who are introverted and don't have jobs, they tend to become extremely depressed. And if you're extremely depressed, it's not a good situation for yourself and for the people around you, especially your loved ones. Your first goal is to get a job. You need to have a source of income. And then if you would like to expand in another field or to have another source of income, then go ahead. So the biggest obstacle is your temperament and possibly your attitude. So why do I talk about attitude? If you feel that accomplishing a task is impossible, then you have a big problem. Your mind will come up with excuses. You are more likely to procrastinate you will intentionally make mistakes and usually when you feel that something is impossible you will bring forward many bad habits that can guarantee failure so consider this there are many people with low intelligence and low education who are excelling in call center work and in fact even if you don't work in a call center there are higher paying jobs such as sales and like other other kinds of work there are business owners who didn't finish college and that's okay so it's not really a qualifications thing it's more of a skills thing 
It's your attitude. If you don't have the skills, you can learn the skills. You can buy a book. You can take a training program. You can, you know, everyone, before college, everyone is considered uneducated. And they go to college to get educated. Like, that's college is an institution that sells education. But the good thing is college is not the only institution that sells education. There are there are organizations that sell online courses. There are mentorships. There are apprenticeships. Like, for example, I have a friend. Their family did not feel that they'll have money to get him to finish college. So what they did is his dad has some connections with the owner of a metal working shop. So he had him apprentice in the metal working shop and he knew he learned about metal working. He eventually learned about auto repair and a whole bunch of things. And he has his own business now. He's also like an IT manager in like one of the big companies. And you know, that's that's awesome. Like that's someone who didn't finish high school and is making millions of pesos simply because of his extended education. And you can do that. You know, you, you don't have to go to a, ver- a very specific institution. You can just learn valuable skills, okay? If you decide that you want to pursue a career that you want to pursue, go do it. Especially if you're afraid. If you're afraid of doing something, go do it. Because if you go do it, if you, if you do something that you're afraid of, you're going to grow. And the more growth you experience, the more you'll be able to pursue bigger things. Okay. Now, let's go to question number two. Let me just adjust this so you can see more of the screen. So according to Google, the applicant at the call center doesn't have an age limit. Do you think I'll still be hired at the call center? Yes, I am a licensed teacher and have a have computer skills, so kulang ng S, but I'm 53 years old now and I still have no experience in the field of that kind of work. So my answer is, I don't have water here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, get, I'm getting thirsty. Uh, yeah, my answer is yes, many companies hire up to age 60. If your English is good and you don't have any health or attitude problems, then they have no reason not to hire you. So the only thing that they check is, can you speak in English? Can you use a computer? Do you have any health problems? If you have health problems, they might not hire you. If you have an attitude problem, obviously, if you're going to have a problem with attendance and following instructions, they're not going to hire you. So sometimes the problem is you have good English, but they're not hiring you because they're detecting an attitude problem. So if you are likely going to have attendance problems, if you're likely going to not follow instructions, or if you're likely going to quit the job in the next two years, then they're not going to hire you. That's an, uh, They call it an auto-fail. Okay. Next, let me just adjust this. Is it difficult to pass the job? Is it difficult to pass the job in the job interview in a call center? Are there many applicants who pass the interview? Nope. That is, you know, the work. Uh, I mean, getting hired in a call center is difficult. If you apply and you are joined, if you have like 20, if you're a group of 20 people applying in a call center job, chances are only one person out of the 20 people will get hired. So usually call center, uh, when you apply in a call center, like one out of 20 people who apply gets hired. Why? Because not everyone can speak good English. Not everyone has a good attitude. Not everyone is willing to work night shift. So some people there, they have no idea what call center work is. They show up and oh, kailangan pala magaling mag-English. Or they show up and, oh, kailangan pala, uh, kailangan pala mag-work ng weekends. Oh, kailangan pala night shift. Hindi ako papayagan ng magulang ko, ng tatay ko, ng boyfriend ko. So, that, you know, that that's part of the people who quit. Like, um, so it's not just a skill. It's not because it's hard. 
they they are very specific about what they're looking for. They're looking for people who can speak good English, people who know how to use the computer, people who will not have any problems with attendance. They don't have problems following instructions, and they have no problems working weekends, graveyard shift, night shift, and holidays. So if you're that kind of person, you're fine. You should be fine. If you can speak in English fluently, if you can carry a decent conversation in English, then you should be fine, okay? So, um, so as I was saying, one out of 20 applicants don't get hired in an interview. So here's the thing. With my current skill level, it takes me 16 interviews to find a good job offer. And that's not so bad. You know, 16, like, I'm going to go to 16 interviews and I'm going to get a good job offer. That's worth it. So if I spend, like, 200 pesos for each interview, I'll potentially spend 200 times 16, 3,200 pesos, and then I'll get a job that pays me 20, 25, 30,000 pesos, and that's not so bad, right? So it, it's a better option than, you know, s- selling something weird or something that you don't trust, right? Um, and by the way, I, I discussed that in detail in this lesson. Like, uh, you can go to callcentertrainingtips.com forward slash number four and the word hired, H I R E D. And you can just read that, and I explain that in detail. Call center work. So I'm also editing. So while I'm recording this video, I'm editing for, um, I'm editing for errors, and I still make errors. But the only difference is I work on fixing my errors. If I find an error, I'm just gonna fix it. No problem. That's my attitude. Now, if your problem is like, oh, I have errors, like, what, what are you going to do? Are you not going to fix it? Then that's, that's going to be a problem for you. Um, anyway, let's go to number four. Number four, once I failed my first job interview, is there any chance for another interview? Well, most of the time, companies will allow you to apply after three to six months. So some companies will apply you to uh, will allow you to reapply after a year. So yeah, like if you fail, you can try again. But usually, in my case, if I fail, I have like a dozen more places to go to. And just to give you a quick background, like when you go to the when you go to the page. Um, so my strategy is I print thirty copies of my resume. I have I send 200 online job applications and then I go to uh, interviews. I ask people around. So um, I go to walk-in applications. I make it a goal to get to 20 interviews and then that's how I find my target my target work. And I encourage you to do all 16 interviews because not all interviews are going to turn out well and that's fine. That's part of the process. But you know, you need to have a healthy attitude when it comes to failure and rejection. Because failure and rejection is going to be part of your day-to-day life. You know, not everyone's going to say yes to you all the time. But getting rejected or failing, it shouldn't discourage you from asking or it shouldn't discourage you from trying. Because the people who never try, they're guaranteed to fail. And, you know, that sucks. I don't want to lose opportunities because I didn't try. So, yeah, just do your best. And, you know, I'm here for you. If you have any questions, let me know. Send me a message. And, you know, if you're a student, take advantage of that. Write me emails like these. Write me uh, long messages. Write me a list of questions and I'll do my best to answer I'll send you a reply via email or I'll shoot a video like this likely I'm gonna do both like if you've seen the Google document that I have earlier so if you have any questions let me know and I'll talk to you soon bye bye